Hey y'all, Coach and Fight here, guys. Stay see with me. Hey y'all. And in today's class, we're going to be talking about Christmas in the Bible. Okay, Christmas in the Bible. We're going to be looking at various verses from the scripture as we try to find where Christmas is in the Bible. It's in the Bible? Well, different parts of it we're going to find here. We're going to find verses that talk about the tree and the ham and okay. the gifts and the nativity scene and even Santa Claus and how we go to church. Mm -hmm. It's kind of spread out, but it's actually in the Bible. All right. The thing is, it's not looked upon as a good thing. Right. Mm -hmm. Like the first verse we'll look at in Revelation chapter 11 and verse 10 it's talking about after they had killed those two witnesses, how they celebrated by sending each other gifts. Right. Matter of fact, go ahead and read it. Okay. This is Revelation 11 and 10. And they that dwell upon the earth shall rejoice over them and make merry and shall send gifts one to another because these two prophets tormented them that dwelt on the earth. So this is the only scripture that we can find in the New Testament that refers to Christmas at all. And what you have here is after they have killed the two witnesses, our father's witnesses in the end times, killed them in the street. They started sending gifts to one another. Mm, okay. Notice right there in verse 10 where it said they make merry. Right. That lets us know that these are Christmas gifts. So they basically had a Christmas party after they had killed the two witnesses. So this would have taken place around what we know as the month of December. Yeah, sometime around that month, we have a lot of prophecies about this earthquake that's also talked about in this chapter. I think Haggai prophesied about it happening around the month of December or the ninth month on the sacred calendar. So there is some relationship there. Mm -hmm. And we're going to see that again, referring to this earthquake. But finishing up talking about these two witnesses, I think it's important to note how this implies that these two witnesses were actually speaking against Christmas. I mean, we killed them. And then the first thing we do is have a Christmas party mm -hmm. that's kind of in celebration. So they must have been doing something to hurt the people's feelings, at least when it comes to their Christmas celebrations. Right. And so we're going to see why as we find some of these other verses in the scripture so that was talking about gifts now let's come over and talk about the tree which we read about it in jeremiah chapter 10. Mm -hmm. if you would go ahead and read verse 1. hear ye the word which the lord speaketh unto you o house of israel we're going to find out that israel and this christmas celebration goes way back long before our messiah was ever born here on the earth thus says the lord Learn not the way of the heathen, and be not dismayed at the signs of heaven, for the heathen are dismayed at them. Now this is important to note, that it is the heathen that are dismayed by the signs of heaven. You mean like the stars and the, uh, the moon and sun and stuff like that? Christmas particularly is associated with the sun, mm -hmm. whereas Easter is more related to the moon. That's where the heathen worship the moon goddess. Okay. Christmas is when they worship the sun goddess. And we're going to see that here. We're getting a little bit ahead of ourselves. Okay. But you're right as far as those are the signs of heaven. But go ahead to verse 3. For the customs of the people are vain. For one cutteth a tree out of the forest, the work of the hands of the workmen with the axe. So there is your tree being cut down. He goes out into the woods and finds this tree. And it should be noted that you and I have done this way back in the past mm -hmm. where we've gone out in the woods and found a tree that looked like a Christmas tree or something we would put in our house, cut it down with an axe. And you know that this is referring to um, Christmas, not just going and, you know, getting firewood. It's because it says customs. Yeah. Well, it says it more clearly there in verse four. Look at that one. They deck it with silver and gold. They fasten it with nails and with hammers. That is moved not. So they've brought it in the house and put silver and gold. Tinsels. Tinsels on it, right? Mm -hmm. And ornaments and stuff. And they fastened it down with the tree stand there. Mm -hmm. And so now it's a Christmas tree. Yeah. Mm -hmm. 
But we have to go back to verse 2 where it tells us not to do this. This is what the heathen are doing. Mm -hmm. So we are not to be dismayed by this at all. This tree is actually a representation of that sun god. I don't want to call him by his name. We'll see it a little later. Begins with a B. But this is actually a six foot tall statue of a sun god in the living room. Mm -hmm. And this is way back in Jeremiah, like you said, way before the time of the Messiah, before his birth. Right. Already talking about the Christmas tree. Mm -hmm. Now let's go and let's find the nativity scene in the scripture. All right. We find it in the lives of the prophets, particularly down there with the life of Jeremiah. This book is all about what happened to the prophets, mm -hmm. what they did. Like in here, you see how Jeremiah helped the Egyptians with this, that, and the other snake bites and different stuff. Mm -hmm. Well, you see down there in verse 8 that he gave them a prophecy. Will you go ahead and read that? Okay. This Jeremiah gave a sign to the priests of Egypt that it was decreed that their idols would be shaken and collapsed through a savior, a child born of a virgin in a manger. So this is referring back to the great earthquake mm -hmm. that what we were talking about in Revelation chapter 11 mm -hmm. is talked about all over the scripture. And I think this is important to note as far as prophecy. We may do another class on this a little bit later, how he's prophesying about this child, this virgin in this manger mm -hmm. and this earthquake that's actually going to shake down all of their idols. Mm -hmm. Wherefore, even to this day, they revere a virgin giving birth and placing an infant in a manger. They worship. So this is your nativity scene. It is. Mm -hmm. It actually started way back there in Egypt. Mm -hmm. Also during the time of Jeremiah. So Jeremiah has talked about the nativity scene mm -hmm. and he's also talked about the tree. Right. Which lets us know that this practice has been going on way before our Messiah ever came down to the earth. Mm -hmm. Let, let's finish this out and read a little bit more of this. And when Ptolemy, the king, inquired about the cause, they said, It is an ancestral mystery delivered to our fathers by a holy prophet, and we are to await the consummation of this mystery. So that's what the nativity scene is really all about, is... Related to this prophecy of this earthquake. Mm -hmm. So we look and we see it a little bit differently now mm -hmm. when we ride and we see them on the side of the road. These people are reminding themselves or reminding us that are in knowledge of these scriptures that those idols, even that nativity scene itself, is going to be destroyed in this great earthquake. Right. Mm -hmm. And now the next custom that we're going to talk about is how they have the Christmas ham every year. Yeah, that's a big custom. It's actually is a part of that tradition. We see it all the way back with Antiochus Epiphanes in the book of First Maccabees when he actually roasted a pig on the altar. Mm -hmm. Talking about the temple, he actually put a whole nother altar over top of our father's altar there along with his other idols. But then, like we see there in verse 47, they actually sacrificed pigs on that altar. So we know that this happened around the time of what is celebrated as Christmas. We see that down in verse 59, talking about the 25th day of the ninth month. Mm -hmm. That's when they actually offered this swine sacrifice on the altar as a whole burnt offering. Okay. This was a Christmas Day celebration, and that's why they have Hanukkah, or the Feast of Dedication, in December, because it actually started on the exact same day as Christmas. Right. It's like Hanukkah is a replacement for Christmas, but we talk about that in other classes. We just bring this verse up to let us know how the pig, or the ham, has actually been a part of the Christmas celebration before our Messiah. Right. And just as an aside note, we can find where the word that they call our Messiah actually means earth pig. Okay, now where did you get that from? Well, this we're looking at followintruth.com mm -hmm. where it says that the Latin word means earth pig. 
So when you look in Latin for the name J E S U S, it actually means earth pig. Mm. Okay. <laughs> and then when you look in the Greek, it means something totally different, actually pointing to their Greek god. Right. And of mm -hmm. course, we're forbidden from saying these names of these gods. But it should be noted as people say harsh things about us who refuse to celebrate this holiday will say things like you don't celebrate the birth of Christ or they'll use this other name here. But what they're talking about is celebrating this pagan God. That's the day that they actually celebrate this pagan God. That's what Antiochus Epiphanes was doing back there. He actually built a statue in the temple for this God. Right. Mm -hmm. And you see how it actually goes way deeper than that because you have all of these names being related back to the same person. You have the J word, the Z word, the B word, and even a whole nother J word here. These are all pointing us or trying to point us back to their pagan gods. Right. It just depends on what culture you're actually talking about. And we see over here in Judges chapter 2 what it was called back there in the Bible. Matter of fact, read verse 12. And they forsook the Lord God of their fathers, which brought them out of the land of Egypt, and followed other gods, of the gods of the people that were around about them, and bowed themselves unto them and provoked the Lord to anger. And we see those names down there in verse 13. Mm -hmm. These are those gods. You have the B word there, which is talking about the sun God. And like we said, that one is related to Christmas. And then you have the A word there, which is pointing to Easter right. or the moon God. Mm -hmm. But notice here how it says that these people actually celebrated these holidays or worshiped these gods just to provoke our Lord to anger right to make him upset mm -hmm. that's the purpose of these holidays it's to create separation between us and our father that's how they actually distance themselves from him mm -hmm. by angering him you remember in the New Testament where it says they have seared their conscience shut right well this is how they do this mm. this is how they sear their conscience is by celebrating these holidays and then they don't have to worry about their conscience anymore. They can go about their lives not worrying about their conscience getting in their way. So this is sort of like the Balaam and Balak move where they purposely um, tricked Israel in order to um, get them to be in a sort of like, a, I guess, conflict with the father. Therefore, him cutting them off from all the blessings um, that he had for them. Absolutely. You see that over in Numbers chapter 23, 24, where Balaam is interacting with Balak, trying to curse Israel, which he was not able to do so. But before he left Balak, he actually gave them instructions on what to do in order to get Israel cursed. And it worked. Absolutely, it worked. You see over in chapter 25, the end result, Balaam told Balak what to do. And like we said, we see that played out. Matter of fact, go ahead and read a little bit of this. And Israel abode in Siddim, and the people began to commit whoredom with the daughters of Moab. And they called the people unto the sacrifices to their gods, and the people did eat and bowed down to their gods. And Israel joined himself unto Baal Peor, and the anger of the Lord was kindled against Israel. So this is them celebrating mm -hmm. Christmas. Mm -hmm. Not only are they marrying in with their daughters, mm -hmm. which of course their daughters would have influenced them and even taught them how to celebrate these holidays. Mm -hmm. But we see here that Balaam's trick worked. Mm -hmm. It actually caused Israel to go and to start worshiping these gods. And like we said, that's what seared their conscience shut, severed their relationship with the Most High. Mm -hmm. And that's why you see now Israel like looking people all over the Christmas holiday commercials mm -hmm. they put these people in the commercials to try to convince us that this is the way we are supposed to be doing right even mm -hmm. tricking us to this day mm -hmm. 
And by creating this separation, of course, we lose the heritage of Jacob. We actually lose our father as our provider. And then we have to depend on them for our provisions. In other words, we have to hire ourselves out as their slaves just so we can get food, clothing, and shelter. Mm-hmm. You know, throughout the scripture, the father, you know, makes a statement where he says, and my anger will be against you and my anger will be against you. So it's not something that should be taken lightly. It's something that, you know, the father takes very seriously about angering himself. Um, and, you know, he also says that he will not um, allow us to worship him and other gods, being that he is a jealous God for our for our love, not that he's, you know, the jealous in the way that we think of jealousy, but for our um, our love and our adoration of him as father. That actually brings us to the next verses that we wanted to talk about. And that's over in Isaiah chapter 24. Mm-hmm. If you would read there at verse 14. They shall lift up their voices They shall sing for the majesty of the Lord. They shall cry aloud from the sea. So here these people are singing at the top of their voices to our father. Mm -hmm. But go on. Wherefore glorify ye the Lord in the fires, even the name of the Lord God of Israel in the isles of the sea. So it's kind of like they're singing Christmas carols here a little bit Mm -hmm. or hymns at least. But go on to verse 16. Look at our father's response to all of this joyous singing. From the uttermost part of the earth have we heard songs, even glory to the righteous. But I said, my leanness, my leanness, woe unto me. The treacherous dealers have dealt treacherously. Yea, the treacherous dealers have dealt very treacherously. So when are people singing joyous songs to our most high, but... Our creator is actually grieved by them. Mm. That's actually on Christmas. Mm. When everybody is down there at the church talking about joy to the world, but they're actually there in worship of a whole nother God. So it's like, yes, they're making um, a joyful noise, but it's not a joyful noise that the father is pleased with. It's not pleased with it at all. In fact, when we read on a little bit more, we see what happens as a result of this down in verse 17. Fear and the pit and the snare are upon thee, O inhabitant of the earth. And it shall come to pass that he who fleeth from the noise of the fear shall fall into the pit. And he that cometh up out of the midst of the pit shall be taken in the snare. For the windows from on high are open and the foundations of the earth do shake. So here we are again talking about this earth shaking, Mm -hmm. this earthquake that's going to shake down every building on the planet. Mm -hmm. Notice how all of this shaking is related to Christmas. Mm -hmm. Look at verse 19. The earth is utterly broken down. The earth is clean, dissolved. The earth is moved exceedingly. So, you know, this reminds me of how troubled our people are doing this season as they try to convince their relatives and loved ones not to be partaking in these pagan feasts. Right. But this is actually going to be the only thing that stops them Mm -hmm. is when on Christmas Day, from what it looks like to me, we're going to have this earth shaking. The earth shall reel to and fro like a drunkard and shall be removed like a cottage and the transgressions thereof shall be heavy upon it. And it shall fall and not rise again. This is talking about the pole shift. Mm -hmm. So this is talking about the earthquake that's going to rearrange the continents. Mm -hmm. Like the third testament of the Bible says, three quarters of the earth will go underwater and new land will appear. That's what the Bible is saying when it says that we will have a new earth. Mm -hmm. All of the pictures of the globe will actually become void because our planet is not going to look like that ever again. Right. So we can imagine that every wall, just like the Bible says, every building and every idol will fall on that day. And it looks like it's going to be on a Christmas day. Well, it's definitely, you know, we've seen the gifts. We've seen the tree, the decoration. We've seen the caroling. 
as well as the ham. These are all traditions and customs that definitely happen, you know, within the season um, of what is called Christmas. So Christmas is actually in the Bible. Right. It's actually all over the Bible. Just not a good thing. It's actually a warning telling us not to be like these heathen that are actually celebrating this holiday. Mm -hmm. To me, what it seems like, mm -hmm. this reminds me of how Jehu tricked all of the people down in the house of this false god, having a great celebration for this false god just so that building would collapse on them. Mm -hmm. Yeah, a lot of people were slaughtered around that time as Jehu brought them all together uh, for the intentions of killing them. We see that in 2 Kings chapter 10. Yeah, he destroyed the people. He destroyed their idols and he destroyed their buildings and everything. Right. Mm -hmm. Which to me sounds like all of these prophecies that we're getting out of Egypt, talking about Jeremiah and what we get out of Isaiah and John the prophet in the book of Revelation. Right. So with all these customs and all these traditions that um, people come together uh, to, I guess, partake in during around this time, throughout scripture, we're definitely being told that um, for those who are, I guess, true believers of the Father, it's definitely not a um, day that you want to be a part of. You definitely want to be able to flee away from anything that represents these things that's definitely going to bring the Father's anger upon you. And sadly enough, it seems as though those of the darkness are trying to convince people to actually celebrate these seemingly just for their destruction. Kind of, they know these things are coming and they're kind of trying to put the unknowledgeable person in the way. That person that don't know, that don't read the Bible, you notice are the main ones who are focused on Christmas. Mm -hmm. You know, they are being rebellious all year long. Many of them could not quote the Ten Commandments if you paid them to, but yet they become ultra religious there on Christmas as they get involved in Saturnalia and other revelries associated with Christmas, drinking and partying and indulging in gifts and whatnot. Or even um, to the point of being, you know, distanced from, the, like you said, the Bible all year long. But now around this time, they're all of a sudden, you know, want to celebrate the birth of Christ. Yeah, but if they truly wanted to celebrate the birth of our Messiah, they would recognize him as the law made flesh, as the mm -hmm. Bible made flesh. And you would see the fruits of their labors as they actually did what the Bible says. And one of the things that the Bible says is don't be acting like heathen participating in these Christmas celebrations. Right. And with that, I believe we're going to close this video out. If you got anything out of it, hit the like button. If you didn't hit the dislike button, but leave us a comment either way. And Shalawama. Shalawama.